So before we get started with this video, leave a comment down below. What would you say is your most used iOS feature? Not application or product or service, but iOS feature that kind of gets you through your day to day. Because in this video, what I wanna do is talk about 12 iOS features that get progressively more useful as the video goes on. Now again, this is my personal list, but hopefully you kind of pick up on some of these iOS features. Maybe you didn't know them. Maybe you can add them to your arsenal because these are extremely useful features that I honestly use on a day-to-day -day basis. So without further ado, let's talk about 12 iOS features that get progressively better as the video progresses. Let's get into it. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. And as I mentioned, these iOS features will get progressively more useful as the video goes on in my personal use case. But the first one I wanna mention is copy and pasting text from your physical space. So for instance, if you're in a situation where maybe you have this booklet right here, and instead of typing a word out or typing something out in your notes, you wanna actually just quickly copy and paste it. What you can do is go into your camera app and then actually open it up, put this in the actual frame, and then you'll see this little button show up right here. You tap that, and then you'll be able to see that you can swipe or tap to select the text. You can copy, select all, you can look it up. So if I wanna do something like this, I can even translate it, which is probably my best use case, but I'm gonna copy it right now, and then I'll go over here, go into my notes, paste it, and then you can see that most of the information that I highlighted, or all the information I highlighted, will also be there. So you have the Cal Digit, Tough Nano, High Performance, USB-C. So you can start to think about how this can be very useful in multiple situations, whether it's maybe sending a phone number from a sign that you saw, or an address, or what crossroads you're on, and things like that. So I think this is one of the most useful features that we have in iOS right now. Now this next feature is gonna be relatively similar, but we're gonna go into our notes application. And what I'd love to really do, and I do this pretty often, is actually taking a picture of, let's say a document and then putting it as a PDF into my actual notes application. So you can see when you're in your notes, you have this menu bar right here that's always there and persistent. You're gonna to wanna to click on this one right here where it's a camera and you can either choose a photo or video because it's gonna ask you if you wanna import a photo or something like that. You can scan a document, take a photo or video, or even scan text. So I'm gonna scan a document I'm gonna scan the same document right here, and you can see that it'll start to highlight it, it'll take that picture, and then it'll save it right here, and you can even add more scans. If I wanna open up this booklet and add a few more in here, I can do that as well. Just hold it. I'm not even pressing the button because it knows exactly what I'm looking for, and then we can press save both of them, and then once you press save, it'll be saved onto your actual notes document, and then you're able to see them, scan documents, quick look, share them, save to files, print, whatever the case may be. You can go in here and look at it if you want to. And again, this is gonna work best with actual documents, not this kind of example here, but you can see again where this use case can be very useful. So now the third useful iOS feature that's built into the Notes app itself is again gonna be PDF related. Now I work with a lot of PDF, so this has been extremely useful for me, but let's say you have an entire Notes that you wanna turn into a PDF, right? So if you wanna turn this whole piece into a PDF and not just have these PDFs right here, there's actually a way to do it. It's not very obvious, but we were able to kind of figure it out. So the first thing you wanna do is press the share button. You're gonna go where it says collaborate here. We're gonna to touch on that. We're gonna press send copy. And then from there, you're gonna go down, press markup, and then you're gonna to wanna to do whatever you wanna do. But this reason we're gonna go into the markup is because in the markup feature, you can then press done, and then you can save the file too, and then save it to your iCloud drive, and then it's gonna save as a PDF. So then if I go into my files, you can now see that this is right here, and this is a PDF of the actual notes application, and you can see it right here, which again, is awesome to have. So whenever you need to open or create a PDF, you can then do that directly from your notes application. So this next one is a quick one, but it's something that I use pretty often. So if you go into your control center and you go to your timer widget right here, if you click on the timer, obviously it's gonna take you to the timer, but if you wanna do something quick and you don't wanna take that extra step, you hold down on that timer widget and then you can automatically set a timer whenever you want. So if I set a one hour timer, we'll press start, and then you can see that there's a live activity up there with the timer going on, and you can just click away from it, and then you're good to go, and now you have a set timer very quickly. And then in that same light, the next one I'm gonna talk about, and this is gonna be very useful for different reasons and for different people, but if you don't want that live activity to persist, you can actually just swipe it away, and it'll still be going on in the background, of course. So literally just swipe it away, and you can see that it's gone, and then if I swipe back the other way, it comes back. So swipe in to take it away, swipe out for it to kind of show up again. And this for me is very useful, it's very anecdotal, but when I'm watching my Miami Heat games, the live score is probably about 15 seconds to 20 seconds ahead of what I'm actually watching. So I'll see the score maybe happening not in real time. So I'll see the score happening in real time up here in the live activity, but the video I'm watching won't actually show me the live score because I'm 20 seconds behind and it's very annoying. So I like to hide that live score 
away in the actual dynamic island. So this next feature is very useful for those people that are really diving deep into menu systems. And this is gonna be a native feature throughout. So this is not just only for Apple native applications, it's a native system feature. So I'm gonna use the settings as an example, but if you go into your settings and let's say you wanna go into your accessibility menu, and then you wanna go into your touch menu, and then you wanna go even deeper and go into call routing and things like that. Now, instead of pressing back and back and back and back, right, what you can do is actually, let's go back to that menu, you can actually long press on here, and then you get all the different menu kind of tiers that you've been on. So you can quickly just go back to the main menu and you're back into your settings. And this is, like I said, great if you are deep into a menu, maybe six, seven, eight tiers in, and you don't wanna press back 18 million times, you can just hold down on the back button and it'll work again with any application to take you back to exactly each portion of that tier. Now this next one is a fun one because now, unfortunately, I'm able to do laundry because before I would kind of mess up my wife or my daughter's laundry because I would just throw everything in the washer. But now with the new feature of visual lookup, which we've had for a little bit, you can actually not only can you see this little button right here, which lets you look at the text and things like that. But now if you swipe up, like I've mentioned before in my previous video about the photos application, visual lookup recognizes that you're actually taking a picture of a laundry tag. You can tap on this and it'll tell you exactly what each of these hieroglyphics mean, right? So you can see that the first one says washing normal process with 30 degrees Celsius, bleaching with non chlorine agents, do not dry clean. So it does read exactly what you see right here and then you're able to then interpret what it says so you don't have to actually memorize what each one of these symbols mean. The iPhone and iOS will just tell you because it is using visual lookup and it smartly knows that you're looking at a laundry tag. Now another application that I use that's extremely useful is the measuring application. Now I use this measuring application a lot when I hang up shelves, when I'm measuring anything, because of course you do have your actual measuring stick so you can measure things that are around you, at least virtually, but I actually use the level. I use the level almost all the time whenever I'm doing anything and this is the level that I rely on. I don't rely on a physical level because it's very easy to see. It lets you know on every single access if it is level or not and then it'll go green and even give you some haptic feedback when you are level or when you're not level. But you can see as I turn it, it moves around exactly how it would because of the gyroscope. So the level feature inside the measure app is amazing. So all you do is you go into spotlight search, type in measure and then it's right there. So the next feature I'm gonna mention is going to be removing the subject from a background. Now I use this a lot because I rely on it to make thumbnails and things like that. And it isn't perfect. So for those people that are pixel peepers and are kind of in this animation and thumbnail design world, maybe this is gonna be the perfect solution. But for everyday people that just wanna quickly remove somebody from a background, this is extremely useful. So as you can see, I was able to attend the Rivian R2 event, which is awesome. If you guys wanna check that out, head over to Electrex channel. But if you go onto a picture that has a subject like myself right here, if you long press on that subject, you'll get like a little highlight animation and you can move it around. Now, after you move it around, it will come up with a little menu where you can copy, add sticker and share. So if I wanna copy this and let's go back to our original note, we'll press paste here and you can see that I was actually removed. And for the most part, it is pretty accurate in removing the background. Obviously the clearer than the cleaner the background is and the farther away it is, the better it's gonna be. But even on some images that are pretty tough and you can see around my hair, it works pretty well, which I love to see. And the next thing you can do, which isn't part of what I use most often, but you can add it as a sticker as well. So if you add it as a sticker, you can then use it in iMessage and things like that. You can add an effect to it. You know, you can add it, make it puffy, make it shiny, give it an outline, press done, and then you're able to use that sticker in iMessages or anything else that you can type on. And then that's a perfect segue into the next one, which is editing and unsending iMessages. Now this one was a long time coming. I've been waiting for this for a very long time, but if you just type in a message and maybe you do a typo, where I'm saying here, tell my more instead of tell me more, you can actually long press on here then you can actually undo the send or edit it. Now, the way that this is done is you have about a 15 minute window to actually edit this text. So I can edit it, change it up to tell me more, and then you press this little check mark right here, and then it also lets you know and it lets the other person know on the other side that, that this is an edited copy, and you can type on that, and then it'll actually tell you exactly what you edited it from. So it'll let you know what you originally typed, and then what you fixed it, and then if you long press it again, you can actually completely undo the send and it'll poof away. And then it will let the other person know that you unsent a message, but it won't let them know what that message was. So one of my most used features for sure. So now we're coming up to the final two features that I use most often. And this one has to be copy and pasting edits in the Photos app. So for instance, if you guys saw one of our recent videos about the Photos application, I highly recommend going to check that out if you haven't. But to give you guys an idea of what that means, if you press auto here, let's say you do a crazy edit. Let's say I wanna add a filter on here. You know, Maybe I wanna add some more exposure to make it different and make it look interesting, right? Obviously this doesn't look good, but we'll press done. And then after it's done, it'll stay like that. But if I press on the ellipsis button up here, you have the ability to copy edits. Now don't press copy because this copies the image. You want to copy the edits itself. So you copy the edits. And if you have a similar photo over here, I can then press the ellipsis again, press paste, 
and it'll paste those edits exactly how they were in the previous one. So if you have a bunch of pictures for a product that's kind of taken in a bunch of the same lighting, and you just wanna do one edit across all of them, you can just edit one image and then paste it across a bunch of them. The one thing you will not copy over is a crop. So if you crop in or crop out or whatever the case is, or crop to a different size, it's only gonna copy the actual variables of editing the actual image. It won't copy over the crop itself. So you will have to manually crop it every time, but at least you can actually save some time by copying over the edit. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about live listen. And now live listen for us as parents has been a game changer, especially when we're kind of on the road or maybe we're on vacation or maybe we're staying at somebody else's house and we don't have our nanny camera to then be always seeing what our daughter is doing at night and making sure that she's asleep. So the next best thing that's actually built into everybody's phone is if you go into your control center and you have this little ear right here. If you long press on the ear, so there are a bunch of different options that you can take advantage of, like you see your AirPods Pro, but you wanna make sure that you have your AirPods in your ears already for this to actually take place. But we're gonna talk about live listen. So what live listen allows you to do is actually leave your phone or whatever iDevice is connected to your headphones, you leave it in a certain room, and as long as you're within 30 to 50 feet or within the actual Bluetooth connectivity range, then you can hear everything that the iPhone is picking up through your AirPods. So I'm pressing this right now, and as I'm talking, you can see that the headphone level is active, and I'm kind of hearing myself talk because it's picking it up on the iPhone and then kind of regurgitating whatever I'm saying into my ears. So that's gotta be the most useful, I wouldn't say it's the most used because it kinda depends on the use case that we're in, but it is one of the most useful built-in iOS native features for, again, my personal use case as a parent that wants to kinda be able to put their kid down when they're at somebody else's house, maybe it's past nine o'clock, and then you still wanna be out and hanging out with whoever you're with at that house, but you want your kid to still be able to get to sleep on time and not stay up until 10, 11, 12. But those have to be my 12 most used features. As you can see, my live activity is still going on over there. I use these almost on a daily basis, some are more useful than others, and like I mentioned, I wanted to get progressively more useful and more interesting as the video went on, but leave some comments down below about what you think and if you learned anything new. So that will just about do it for this video, everybody. Leave a comment down below of what you learned in this video, if you learned anything at all. Are there any features that maybe I omitted that you would kind of include in this list? Because again, this is my personal list. Every person uses their iPhone differently. Every person uses their iOS feature set a little bit differently, and you kind of want to tailor it to how it's going to fit your day in your day-to-day -to, -day to get you from point A to point B. So leave a comment down below, like I mentioned, of any features that maybe you learned that you're going to add to your arsenal, or maybe that you just didn't even know existed at the end of the day. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. Hopefully you agree with my most used iOS feature.